what of the first time you stepped in front of the camera to do an actual shot? What's your recollection of that? The very first shot that we did on this film was me stumbling over some sand dunes hard on the heels of Butt Lancaster and his cronies or the guys that are working for him. And that was all I had to do. I just had to crawl over there. Uh, the camera was miles away and it was all very unreal, you know, it was... In a sense, crawling over a sand dune was a good way to start because you didn't have to bother about acting it. You just had the problem of crawling over a sand dune. So, so the whole kind of acting thing went onto a subconscious level. You weren't bothered about that. It was just getting over the sand dune and to your spot on time. So that was okay. Luckily, in this film, the first couple of days of filming we had, was there were more or less mute shots for me and that I just kept quiet and stood in the background, which gave me enough time to get, become accustomed to, to all the commotion going on all over the place. Um, and I didn't open my, open my mouth until Thursday of the first week or something, so that was quite good. Even then, I was fairly tense. But everybody in the unit and in the film is great. I mean, they're all, they, they do the best that they can to relax you. Uh, that was my biggest problem at the start of the thing, what was being too tense. But now, thankfully, I'm relaxing a great deal more. <laughs> My screen test was a bit of a funny experience because obviously I'd never been involved in anything like that before. But what happened was they very, very quickly organised it so that it was so fast, really, I didn't know what was happening. They booked me on a plane, a flight from Glasgow. that left at the shuttle that leaves at 7 o'clock in the morning. I got to go down, do all this business at the studios, Bray Studios, where they used to do all the old Hammer horror movies. Then I had to fly back home to Glasgow. That sounded OK. But the thing was, nobody knew that I'd never flown before. I'd never been in a plane in my life. So the whole experience of, of getting on, going to the airport, getting on the plane with all these executives with their briefcases and suits was all totally new to me. And the actual flight itself, you know, was, it was wild. And so by the time I got off the plane at, at Heathrow or Gatwick or whatever it was, I was absolutely hyper like that. Really, really, really tense. And then was straight into a car and we're, we're, we're whooshed off to the studios. And, you know, I'm out like this. And we started doing some scenes down by the river because I've got some uh, relations with, a, with a, a mermaid girl in this movie. And so we were down at the river at Bray. And I came out and I was acting all over the place, you know, like this dead, dead big and, and useless. They must be the most ridiculous looking pieces of footage around. I'd love to see them if I can get a hold of them because I was so like that. But luckily in the afternoon we went into the, inside the studio and there was an actor there called Dennis Lawson who's in this movie. Uh, and he's got a wonderful kind of calming tone about him. And we were actually doing a scene inside his dining room. And thankfully, because of his calm and tone and his kind of professional manner, it brought me down to the right level. And I think it was probably that little scene that we did that got me the part. In what ways has Lancaster helped you, if at all? Well, it... It's very difficult to try and state the amount of help that an actor like Butt Lancaster can give somebody like me, because in the first place, I'm in total awe of this legend, and that he should even be speaking to me in the first place. I feel it's to be a, a totally ridiculous situation. But he is a very professional actor. Apart from the fact that he's a star and a legend, He's a professional actor that likes to rehearse, he likes to work things out. Now for me, who, who's coming into this business fresh, and this is my first film, um, those basic processes of acting are not things that I know a great deal about. But Lancaster knows them inside out. But he's still very open and very warm and free about helping me, about saying, does that feel good for you? You know, this is what I would like to do, says Bert Lancaster. This is what I would like to do. Does that suit you? And in observing the way that he breaks everything down, just watching him work is help, in a sense. It's like learning from him. Um, 
but he's a nice guy, you know, he uh, doesn't go around saying, I'm Burt Lancaster, hey, look at me, big star, anything like that. He helps you all the way, it's great. Peter, how would you define the difference between communicating as a stand-up comedian and as an actor in films? The adjustment of disciplines. Well, what I did before I worked on this film was a kind of stand-up comedy act. And obviously there's a very big difference between what you do on stage dealing with an audience and what you do in front of a film unit of 100 or 120 people or so. Um, when you're on stage with the audience, in a sense you're facing, it's conflict, you know, a lot of the time. It's you versus, I did a gig with Spandau Ballet, the band, in Brighton, and there were 4,000 kids there. Now that's it's a totally different situation when you walk onto the stage by yourself to face 4,000 kids for 15 minutes. That's real heads down, no nonsense, you know. You've got, you've got to really, really work and battle to get a hold of them. And a lot of the time you lose. But with film, you're there as part of a team, really. I mean, you're just one tiny little cog in this whole mechanism which is working to try and achieve the final product, which is the film. I mean, the most important thing about this is not Peter Capaldi, it's not Butt Lancaster, it's the film, the finished thing, that the finished film should be a good, entertaining, interesting film. So there's much more a feeling of working with other people, you know? And certainly the sense of conflict isn't there. There's no fighting, I mean, you don't... You don't fight with a director or fight with your fellow actors. You work to try and achieve an interesting film. Whereas when you're on stage as a comic, you are really in a little bit of a battle, you know, to try and achieve a... try and make the audience laugh. Sometimes they don't, but it's life, you know? I thought you... 22, take one. Second board. Second board. Is this, is this as an action now? Eh? Hey, we be professional guys now, acting. Do we take a little drink? No, this is professionalism here with the drink. No with the drink. Professional acting here. This is Don Sinclair, who. <laughs> remember the guy that was in Gregory's Girl? He looks very much like him. Very sad. I'm his brother. Oh, I've enjoyed the shoot very much so far. And what? Me. You want us to each other? To each other. Hello, Don. Pleased to see you, Don, Hello, baby. Mr. Peter Capaldi. Uh, how, how have you been getting going? Mr. How's, Robert De Niro. How's your... Pe Robert De Who? <laughs> <laughs> how's your career been going? Mr. Lancaster. Yes, this, uh, Chunk. Since, since your performance with, with all those people at the regular school? <laughs> Bomb. <laughs> Bomb. <laughs> I want to go and do acting, I want to do workshops, things like that, so that I can extend my, my, my field, if you like. I want to change my voice as well, so that I'm not limited to, to, to purely Scottish things. I want to be able to do, run the gamut, as it were. Um, it'll be a lot of work. I'll need to do it because when you're in a movie like this, which is a big movie, uh, I guess people will assume things. People will assume that the role that I'm playing is a marvellous piece of characterisation that I must have strived and worked for using all my techniques as an actor. It's not really. It's really that the character is so close to me that Bill Forsyth, the director, felt rather than get an actor to play it, we might as well get the real person to do it, I think. You know, that's the kind of impression. I get. Um, but I don't want to go on playing Danny Olsen all the time. You know, I want to move on to other things. So it will be training, an extensive period of training. And watching people like 
God, John Sinclair, who made John God Sinclair. That's his equity name. Who made such an impact in Gregory? Oh, sorry. Who <laughs> made such an impact in Gregory? In Gregory's girl. I watch. I learned so much from him. From I mean, I'm gonna get some spots next week, which I've learned from him and big ears and everything. <laughs> What do you see as the next step? I don't know what the next step is going to be. I want to do, I want to go on acting. I prefer this to being on stage. Possibly because I haven't been trained in the disciplines and the, the techniques necessary to sustain a reasonable stage career. I feel as if I would be much happier working in films because there's more money in love. No, that's not true. I enjoy the process of filming a lot more than I do that conflict for the audience. I know that's wrong. I know there shouldn't be a conflict, but when you're learning like I am, it often happens. Um, what I would like to do is after this movie, between the period, the period between the end of this shooting and the release of the movie, I'd like to do some training. Not drama school or something like that, because all you lovely people out there in drama school, you wouldn't let me in. Don't you remember that? <laughs> I hope they do. I hope you're sitting out there. And you remember that they wouldn't let me in, you see? Um, I don't want to go there. Drama school's horrible. Don't go near it.